One of the true hidden gems of New York City, Governor's Island, is just a short ferry ride from Manhattan. Spend the day with us as we check out jaw-dropping skyline views, historic fortifications and buildings, New York City's longest slide, and some of the best hiking, biking, and picnicking opportunities in the city. This is Magellan. And this is Greyhound. Where we make videos about epic road trips, kayaking, hiking, and other outdoor adventures. First things first, let's talk about how to get there. The ferry, which is the only way to get to the island, can be taken from several places. In Manhattan at the Battery Maritime Building on South Street, or in Brooklyn at Pier 6 in Brooklyn Bridge Park, or at Atlantic Basin in Red Hook. The ferry to and from Brooklyn is on weekends only. It costs $4 and is free for seniors, children, military, and members. You can also get tickets for free if you leave before noon, which we definitely recommend if you really want to explore the whole island. You need to reserve a ticket online or at the kiosk, even if it is free. Summer weekends are super busy. Definitely reserve tickets and always check the schedule. The ferries are wheelchair accessible and you could bring strollers or your own bicycle for free, but on a first come first serve basis. This is gonna be a super fast ride. From Manhattan, you will arrive at Saswan Landing, where there is a giant map and a welcome center. And from Brooklyn, you will arrive at Yankee Pier. And with that, let's explore this 172-acre island that is now open year-round. Right as you arrive from Manhattan, make sure to turn around. The views are pretty incredible. There are also two eateries here, Island Oyster to the west of the landing and Taco Vista to the east where you can enjoy food and drink with the same views of that New York City skyline. If you want a great fast way to get around, consider renting a city bike from the several stations around the island or from Blazing Saddles, where you can also get scooters, go-karts, and surreys. And remember, you can always bring your own bike too, space permitting. There's a paved loop that runs around the shore of the whole island and gives you great views of New York Harbor downtown Manhattan, and the Statue of Liberty. Speaking of Lady Liberty, for great views of this New York City icon, head to Picnic Point, which is located on the southern tip of the island. It's a great place to take a bike break, enjoy the views while you eat, or just relax at a picnic table or in an Adirondack chair. You'll probably see the iconic Staten Island Ferry pass by too. Hit the trails. Bikes can't go everywhere and you'll likely be walking at some point, right? In addition to the roads, there are tons of paved and unpaved trails for walking or running. Some of them lead to hidden historic places like Rachel White Reed's cabin. If you're looking for a unique sleeping experience, check out Collective Retreats, a luxury camping area. With views of the Manhattan skyline and spectacular sunrises and sunsets, you'll be waking up in quiet and solitude next to one of the world's busiest cities. Before you get too excited though, just note that it costs between 500 to 1,000 a night during peak season. This circular fortification was in use for almost 200 years in the defense of New York City and the harbor, especially during the War of 1812 and the Civil War. It was converted into a prison at some point by the army and was almost demolished. It is now under the care of the National Park Service. Another nearby unit under the National Park Service is Fort Jay, the oldest defensive structure on the island. The inside is temporarily closed, but you can walk around this pentagon-shaped structure. Equipped with cannons and later Rodman guns, Fort Jay was used for the defense of New York Harbor up until World War II and was instrumental in George Washington's important retreat in the Battle of Long Island against the British. Because it was the closest major army post to West Point, many famous generals such as Ulysses S. Grant and Robert E. Lee were posted here early in their careers. Colonel's Row is a row of eight brick houses built by the army to entice officer talent in the late 1800s and early 1900s. At the time, joining the army was considered a bad career choice due to low pay and poor housing. This is a former barracks near Fort Jay that was constructed in 1929 
and was among the world's largest army barracks at the time. The barracks ranged from three to four stories in height, with the central section four and a half stories high, with a gable roof and cupola on top. From Ligon Hall, it's time to eat. This is a pretty large food court with a variety of vendors and food trucks. There's even a brewery, Threes, out of Brooklyn. I like beer. After you eat or drink, there's a nice terrace to walk around to. Nearby the food court is a playground where you can get your inner greyhound on and climb stuff. There are swings and hammocks too. Speaking of hammocks, head to the Hammock Grove where you can rest from all the biking and walking and exploring you've been doing. This space is 10 acres and has about 50 hammocks. The Open Orchard is a public art project on the southern part of the island. It consists of 102 recently planted fruit trees from species that used to grow or no longer grow in New York City due to agricultural industrialization. A part of the hills, Outlook Hill is a newly designed 10-acre park. After a shorter hike up a series of reclaimed granite seawall blocks or around a longer winding paved trail, You'll get 360 degree views of Manhattan, Statue of Liberty, New Jersey, and Brooklyn. Another part of the hills is Slide Hill, a playground area for children ages 5 to 100. It features a variety of short, medium, and long slides, the longest of which is the largest slide in New York City, at 57 feet in length and 3 stories high. The oval looks exactly as it sounds, a giant oval-shaped green space for recreation. Here you can play catch or relax at one of the shaded picnic tables or chairs. Located just east of the hills is the urban farm, which focuses on urban agriculture. It features a compost learning center, a teaching garden, and produces thousands of pounds of produce a year for needy families from its fruit and vegetable gardens. I'm a big time gardener and Magellan was waiting a long time for me to leave this section. The Fad Market, which stands for Fashion Art Design, is a pop-up market on the island right next to Liggett Hall where you can buy clothing, soaps, and even sauces. Magellan snagged a fantastic mango hot sauce. The next stop is the bell, which based on our hilarious observation was rung 100% by males while we were there. Magellan waited patiently for two other boy men while he had his opportunity. The May Room is located in the former Our Lady Star of the Sea, an army chapel built in 1942 during World War II. It was repurposed by artist Chantal Martin into a word art exhibit. Although temporarily closed, the Forche Theatre is a pretty cool place to check out even from the outside. Built in 1939 and showing movies up until 1996, composer Irving Berlin wrote a musical called This is the Army after taking in a performance here in 1942. The Yard is an adventure playground administered by Playground NYC for children and children only. Don't get any ideas, Magellan. You're short, but I think your beard gives you away. This is the Parade Ground, a giant green space for sports, special events, picnics, or just taking in the backdrop of that skyline. When the island was an active military installation, the Admiral's house was used as the commanding officer's home. It was the home of many army generals who even ran for president. In 1988, the meeting between President Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev was held in this home after Gorbachev's famous perestroika speech to the United Nations. 
Pier 101 is home to the New York Harbor School and a kayak dock where you can learn to kayak for free on weekends. It is also a great vantage point to see the famous Brooklyn Bridge in the distance. Governor's Island has tons of events. Be sure to check the website for the special events calendar on the day you plan to come. When we came, there was a 5K race in the morning, an afternoon music festival, and a Bee Conservancy seminar in honor of World Bee Day. Let us know what you are most looking forward to when you visit, and we'll see you on the trails or in the water.